So welcome back, guys, to our channel. This is We Are Growth Tech. I'm David once again, and I'm here with my new good friend, Shivali Patel. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, David. <laughs> Thanks for, for being here, and you're representing today Helium 10. Yes, I am. I'm a brand evangelist with Helium 10, but I'm also an Amazon seller. So hopefully bringing a lot of value to your channel. Wow, this is, this is super cool. So you're an Amazon seller, and um, how long you've been selling on Amazon for? About two and a half, I think going on three years. So, you know, right from the, from the get-go, I, I did it on my own. And then uh, it's interesting now to be working with Helium 10 because I have access to all these amazing tools. So I've really seen it all from doing it manually to, to having such useful resources. That's really cool. And yeah, I mean, you're super young. You don't even, you know, look like you would be doing like, you know, e-commerce and stuff like that. Why don't you give a little bit of an introduction about yourself, who you truly are, what you're doing in your life. We are curious to know this about, you know, in, in our channel, we love to interview entrepreneurs and also trying to discover and unveil some of the hidden aspects of their life. For example, I, I say sometimes that I, you know, I used to be a DJ music producer, but I'm a full-time Amazon consultant and, uh, and I pretty much love it. So tell us about yourself. Sure. So um, three years ago, I was actually a pre-med student. I thought I was going to go into medicine and at some point realized that I really loved uh, just networking and the whole idea of having uh, control over time and money and being able to make money from wherever in the world. So naturally, I gravitated to e-commerce. And when I came across e-commerce, there's, of course, no shortage of opportunities. And so I actually did try my hand at a couple other things before I went to uh, FBA, Amazon FBA Fulfillment by Amazon. And once I started really my own brand with uh, selling on Amazon, it was it was really a no brainer from there. So today, I obviously am a brand evangelist with Helium 10, and I enjoy giving back. I, I made, There was a huge learning curve, right, as, as there is with anything. But when you use the resources that are available and you follow the people that have done it before you, it, it, is, it can be very simple and it can be very fun. So yeah, that's where I am today, just uh, grinding on my own business and hustling to give back. That's really cool. That's, uh, that's amazing. You know, I love, I love what you just said, you know, being able to make money from anywhere, just working remotely, etc. cetera. Um, okay, so today we're going to explore, we're going to have a demonstration of one of the most useful tools of Helium 10 uh, that is Black Box. And uh, let's see how is this tool working and how Amazon sellers can get the best out of it. Yeah, absolutely. So right now what I have pulled up, you can see my screen, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So what you're looking at right now is Black Box. And it's one of our Amazon product research tools. As you can see here, we also have something called Trendster, which is great for evaluating trends if you're looking at, uh, at a that's perhaps seasonal. But for the sake of time today, I just want to focus on Black Box. And you can see that there are about five tabs. I personally gravitate towards keywords because it's a great way to take a look at entire markets. So generally when you're looking for a new product, right, to uh, implement or something that you want to start selling, you are looking for opportunity. And opportunity is something that is high in demand, but has a low enough competition where you would be able to make profits. <laughs> high in demand is really when, when you're thinking of Amazon, right? And you mm. are typing something in, in the search bar. Let's say you're, you've been looking for an office desk. When you're typing an office desk, uh, as a seller, what you want to see is tons of people are looking for the term office desk. And that's what I mean by high in demand, that every month on average, there's a good amount of people that are looking for it. And one way to um, really take a look at that and hone in is search volume right here. Now, as you can see, there are tons of different filters here, right? And all of these are great ways for you to filter down on what might signify opportunity to you. Opportunity to you is, it can be different. It's not defined by Helium 10, but it's defined by the user. That's what we like to stress on. So I'm going to go into an example here using some of these filters to narrow it down. Let's say that we want to search up something that's being searched for at least 3,000 times a month with a max of maybe 5,000 times per average every month. That's a good amount of, that's a good amount of searches, right, David? That's like, yeah, that's, uh, 
Okay. Yeah, that's the right spot. You don't want to hit a very low uh, search volume or even too high because it's going to be too competitive there. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes even when you have a high search volume, you can kind of win the jackpot by looking at some of these other ones. So it really is up to whoever is searching for it. I recommend you completely don't use the same numbers I'm about to use. Use whatever is free game <laughs> But for for right now, I'm putting in 3,000 to 5,000 for search volume. Let's say for price point, I'll put in 25 minimum and 75 maximum. Now, where am I picking these numbers from? I'm really picking them at random, but I only <laughs> five because as David said, you don't want to go too low yeah. because you know, what does that do for the profits, right? Like your profit margin might be much lower. You might be making less profit per product. And then sometimes um, with, you know, just... Being, if the price point is too high, essentially what can happen is if you think about how much it might cost you to make a product, if you are picking a product that's super expensive, right? It might be costing you more to make. So that's something to keep in mind. There's no problem with you picking a product that is priced more expensively if your budget is much higher. Mm -hmm. But here I'm sticking with 25 to 75. I feel like, you know, that's, that's reasonable. Um, review count. What does review count mean? So Review count is the average number of reviews for the top products. So I'm going to put in a max of 100, let's say. I feel like 100 is good. So mm -hmm. I particularly love this filter because when you are a brand new seller, right, you are going to have how many reviews? Yeah. Basically none. And so when you're coming on the market with a brand new product, you want to have just enough reviews um, it, it's beneficial to be in a market where there's, where most of the products have lower reviews because then you can compete a lot better. Yeah, exactly. It's a very, uh, very important barrier, let's say a wall to the entry to, to new sellers. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I love that this tool is able to identify on that and narrow it down for us. Because I remember when I was doing this manually, there was no way for, that I could filter through. You know, yeah. Millions. Yeah. I, I think times, you're like nine of my lifetimes, nine of your lifetimes, just to yeah. find, you know, I think this is pretty much the only tool that offers, you know, like the review count or at least as, yeah. uh, as far as I know. So it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for word count, I'm, I'm just going to put in like, I think a few more here. Uh, word count, I'll put in two minimum. You don't have to do that. Technically what I like to, what I like to think of it as right is, if you go to Amazon and you type in kitchen, you're looking for ideas. You're basically treating it like a Pinterest board. But if you go in and you've typed in something like kitchen rug, then you're more likely to buy something, right? Like if you're thinking about it mm -hmm. from a consumer standpoint, the more words you're typing yeah. in, the more sure you're probably like the more specifics you're looking for, you're looking to buy. So yeah. minimum helps with buyer intent. Exactly. I was going to say the same. Yeah. And so the, the longer, you know, is the, the keyword, the, the, you know, the longer is the, 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 we talk often about long tail keywords, you know, so yes. the longer yes. the tail, the, the, the higher the buying intent here. Yes, exactly. So two for word count, I'm going to pick some categories. Let's just do office products since we've been talking about office desks. <laughs> And then maybe patio lawn, and I'll just put in one more. Um, yeah, so we picked hard. categories. You can pick, as you see, there's plenty of other categories. If you are a culinary chef and you like kitchen and dining, totally fair terrain right here. You can pick home and kitchen, kitchen and dining, you know, just whatever you are drawn to, you totally have complete uh, freedom and liberty to pick what you want to sell in the category you want to sell in. Now, I do want to really quickly cover these. There's a bunch, obviously, I'm not going to go into all of them. Uh, each of these, when you, you are using the tool, have an explanation as well. And again, you can filter based on what is opportunity to you. But I love covering these three right here, just because I believe they are very unique to our company. And uh, it, it, you cannot find that on any other software really in the industry, which is competitor revenue here, it's the, it'll tell you the min and max for the top ranking products. So when you are going on Amazon and you're taking a look at the top 10 products that are showing up that are not sponsored, here you can filter that by revenue. So let's say uh, 
as you know, right, David, the, the higher that you rank, the mm. more traffic you're getting, mm. the more sales you are probably making. So here, if we say top, like of the top 10 products that are ranking, let's say more than at least five of them are making more than $2,500 a month on average, right? Yeah. And same thing for competitor reviews yeah. of the top 10. Let's say, let's just increase it by a notch. Let's say six are have less than 150 reviews. So that's a that's a pretty good pool, I think. In in the top 10 products, you have six of them that have less than 150 reviews. That's that to me is is pretty good. So I was just gonna ask you. This uh, this is like a super duper filter. It looks amazing. How do we actually uh, distinguish between the first review count and the second competitor's review? Uh, is is yeah. one of them for each one and the other for the top 10 or how does it Great work? Question. Great question. So this pulls from the entire market. So the, the review count here is the average number of reviews for the top products, but this is only for the top 10. Mm. So, so the 10 that are ranking the highest for those okay. keywords. Okay. Whereas and this, like, this is a, a lot more than the top 10. Okay. And that's an average, right? But I yeah. guess the, the, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's cool. Yep. So uh, let's click search. I feel like we've yep. put in a good, good number of filters. Yeah, that's a lot. 32 phrases. Okay, so this is good. This is really good because that means we narrowed it a bit. Sometimes you'll find that, you know, the phrases here will say 200 plus. So we did a good job narrowing down the filters. Yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> let's look, yeah, let's take a look at some of these. So magical metal windmill. This has a search volume of almost 5,000, is making 6,000 about in revenue each month on average, and then only has two stars. That is insane. What is it? Yeah, it's this? amazing. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. So basically for people that are typing in magical metal windmill, uh, there's, there's great high demand and there's definitely the opportunity for you to improve the product. Yeah. So we have the magical metal windmill. It's at nearly 5,000 search volume, about a little over 6,000 in revenue each month on average. And it only has... 2.1 for a review rating. So this keyword is quite good. And, you know, this to me does signify opportunity. So you would be able to click the three, three buttons right here and click view on Amazon to, to take a look at the actual market. Uh, of course, we don't want to run with necessarily the first great freight key phrase that we see or the first product even. The point of using Blackbox and the Amazon product research tool is really to find opportunity. And so you can find maybe 10 to 20 products because obviously the more products you're able to find, the more research you do, the better your chance at really hitting uh, a great winning product. Now, there is not really a specific winning product that you'll find from the get-go. Obviously, all of that requires work. But again, Blackbox is a great place to start so that you can really identify where those markets are that really do have high demand and low enough competition where you would be able to compete. So magical metal windmill would be a great start, but of course it wouldn't be the only one that you would be looking at. Yeah. So that is a quick demo of black box. That's amazing. So this is really cool. I think there's a lot of, you know, uh, filters here. There's a lot of opportunities here to find, you know, good products with good potential. I think the keyword here is potential. We want to find, potential here for revenue, for sales, for profit. That's amazing. Did we miss anything that you think would be, you know, good to introduce? Um, competing products, for example, we didn't talk about these or broad reach potential or, oh yeah, even best sales period. But I guess that's, if, if you, you want to avoid this, if you want to avoid, you know, like seasonal products. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this would be a great place if, if you are in preparation for a seasonal product, if let's say you were looking to, you know, find something specifically for Christmas or for Easter next year and you want to prep for it, this would be a great way to do that. As well as if let's say you, you're not interested in seasonal products, exclude keywords. So let's say I wanted to skip out on Halloween products. 
uh, you would be able to exclude it with like pumpkin decor or like Halloween and you would be able to type it in and find something that is a lot more sustainable long term. Um, there's fulfillment. Uh, you would be able to pick FBA if that's what you're specifically looking for. You would be able to find your best sellers rank. So, um, you know, just variation count is also, or number of sellers is really helpful, especially if you're looking for something that's either private label or if you're looking for something that you just want to do wholesale with. So if you're doing wholesale, oftentimes what will happen is you have many sellers that are uh, you know, selling the same exact product because that's when you find something that's maybe local and then you list it on Amazon. So there would be a lot more people that are selling that product. But if that's what you are looking to do, then you would maybe want to put in, you know, like number of yeah. sellers you want. You're looking for people that are selling from three to like 20 sellers or something like that. Whereas is, private uh, label max is like two, right? This is a very good one. Um, have you ever tried, I want to ask you something a little bit different now. Have you ever tried to do something more extreme, like, uh, you know, very low keyword search volume or very high price or uh, super bad uh, review ratings or, uh, you know, anything extreme? Did you ever try? Because I think that the, the beauty of this tool is that sellers can actually play with it. And maybe mm -hmm. they can have nice results from, from you know, searches that they, they thought were like impossible or too extreme. Like, I mean, like the, the price, the, the revenue, number of reviews, number of sellers. Yeah, for sure. So um, I've actually definitely, definitely played with the filters and I recommend, you know, whoever is watching this, you do too, because that's how you find really exciting product uh, opportunities and just the potential of that is unlimited, right? We wouldn't be able to do all this manually, but you can with a tool like this. Blackbox actually pulls from over 2 billion data points and manages, uh, well, keeps the maintenance of over 176 million products. So that's a lot. That's a very wide pool to pull that's from, a right? Lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane. It's And that's why I'm so excited about the Blackbox tool. It's because it doesn't matter how many people are selling on Amazon or how saturated you think it is. Sometimes it is very easy to think something like that is saturated, but it's not because you have tools like this really watching your back. And I don't yeah. say that just as somebody who works for Helium 10. I genuinely have been on both sides of the spectrum. So I can say that with confidence, you know? Yeah, I, but, um, I, def I definitely agree here. Uh, we used to say you're getting a smaller piece of the cake because there is probably more competition. There, is, there are more products, more sellers, but the cake itself is much larger because we all see how e-commerce is just growing and growing, how the, how the volume is going up every year, every, every quarter, I would say. So yeah, this is definitely amazing. Did you, do you want to say something else about black box? I was going to say in, um, you know, there's, there's many tabs up here and I personally gravitate towards keywords, which is what we just took a look at, but in the products tab, it's always interesting to me because you can also filter by number of images and uh, number of images can be an interesting thing to look at along with, you know, like, let's say you put in really bad review ratings or like really great review ratings. And then just like three images that's that's those are people that are not really making full use of the potential of their listing page so that that is a little bit more advanced but uh it, it is a great way to still look for opportunity definitely i didn't even see that before that's amazing you know even yeah, putting a problem. filter you know <laughs> including a filter with number of images because as an amazon seller as someone who's always on top of what is going on we all know that you have to optimize your images. You have to make the most of them. You have to, you know, use as many images as you can. So it's definitely a big waste if you're not using, uh, you know, the right images and if you're not using enough images. So Shivali, this was really, really good. And I think we're gonna have a follow-up video uh, showcasing some others of the amazing tools of Helium 10 here. So yeah, I guess I will see you very soon. And if you guys have any question for me, for Shivali, for, for Helium 10, just leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you very soon, Shivali, uh, in the next video. Thank you very much. Thank you.